Okay, I think everybody's in. I'm happy to have you back from the coffee break now and would like to introduce to you a talk about monitoring MySQL with Julian Pivotto. Hello everyone, thank you for being there. So, uh, a few words about myself. Uh, I do a lot of open source things, automation and monitoring. That's what can define me. I come from Belgium and I work uh, at Inuit, one of the major open source companies uh, in Europe. So, uh, let's talk about monitoring, but you already know a lot about monitoring because you are there. So, uh, what is important in monitoring nowadays is that you uh, collect a lot of data, but that you don't only collect them to alert you when something is wrong, but that you also collect them to understand how your system reacts, or what your system is doing, and what are the bottlenecks, like that kind of thing. So you should do uh, monitoring for a lot more than just uh, the alerting purpose. And then, uh, the question is that what do you want to monitor? Do you want to like uh, define in advance all the metrics that you want to collect? Do you want to uh, look, okay, I need to know that MySQL global variable, I need to know that specific thing, or do you want to just take everything and just say, okay, MySQL, give me everything you want, I will store it. If I need it one day, okay, I will have the data. So when you do a postmortem, it is difficult to do a postmortem on data that you don't have. Push or pull is also important in monitoring. So uh, a lot of monitoring systems are push-based, where the system push the metrics. Uh, it means that if you have two, three, four, ten monitoring servers, how do you deal with the configuration of your end service? If you change the IP of that single server, uh, what do you do? Uh, how do developers do? Do they need a full monitoring solution on their laptop and all the configuration set, uh, setting, uh, etc., uh, in their laptop? So it's quite complicated. Uh, on the pool-based models, then it's really easier because it's the Prometheus that will uh, just go and fetch anything it needs. Uh, and to be able to do effective polling, Prometheus also integrates with service discovery, so like when you add a server and then it will know automatically and that kind of things. Availability, so monitoring is super important and you cannot tell to your customer, okay, the database was down because uh, the monitoring system was down. You cannot tell your customer, okay, I didn't see what was going on, so yeah, we couldn't act, we couldn't react on what was going on, we took the wrong decision. So it's very important to have availability on your monitoring. Uh, it's important to monitor your monitoring, like meta-monitoring is called. So it's important to have all of that. But uh, in a lot of monitoring systems, that costs a lot. That is very complex to set up. And we'll see later that with Prometheus, it's very easy to get uh, availability on your monitoring stack. So let's go. Uh, let me present you Prometheus. So Prometheus in one sentence would be like cloud-native, data-centric, open-source, performance, simple, metrics collection, analysis, and routing tool. That's what Prometheus is. And now we will see what was behind those words. So when we say that uh, it is cloud-native, it means that uh, it is easy to configure, uh, easy to deploy, easy to maintain. It's one binary. Uh, it is designed in multiple services, so you don't have one big service that does all the things. Uh, it is container ready, you can run it in your Kubernetes infrastructure, in your OpenShift, anything. Uh, and it can also talk to, with different orchestration layers, like uh, Kubernetes, console, that kind of thing. So you don't need to change everything any, every, every time that you change everything in your infrastructure. That's very important. So it's fully open source, it's Apache 2.0, there is no company behind it. Uh, well, no, uh, there are multiple companies that work together uh, on that project. It is part of the Linux Foundation, uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So uh, it is in the same group of projects like uh, Kubernetes and that kind of things, but it works very well outside of Kubernetes and on traditional uh, data center and infrastructure. There is no problem with that. We turn in Go and you can have it uh, on uh, Linux, FreeBSD, Windows, Mac, anything you want. And there are a lot of 
integrations for uh, third-party software that you can monitor easily uh, with Prometheus. There are, uh, I think, more than 100 uh, available out of the box. When I speak about performance, uh, it is really designed to fetch a lot of data and not like every five minutes, every ten minutes. No, it's it's designed to fetch a lot of data very frequently. And uh, well, in the version 2.0 of Prometheus that went out one or two weeks ago, uh, they they made it even better. They rewrote they have their own storage engine now for the database. Uh, and now they can handle new use cases like Kubernetes is much, much more efficient in the new release of Prometheus now. So it's really getting a lot better and it doesn't take too much disk space for what it's storing and CPU and memory are also fine. So this is really, really great. The data centric part means that uh, unlike other systems like Graphite, uh, you have metadata in Prometheus. So like uh, in this case, I have one metric with one metadata called handler, which is the temp write. And once you have all those uh, metadata, you can query them, filter change, you can do anything with that. So you don't have just flat metrics, you have metrics with an additional value uh, metadata, and then you can uh, play with that uh, a lot and do a lot of fun queries to your data. So this is very important that Prometheus has a different way to play with all those metrics. So you can, what can you have as types in Prometheus, metric types? You can have counters, uh, gauche, histograms, and summaries. So basically a counter will always go up and when it goes to zero, then Prometheus knows that, okay, it's, it will just like, uh, don't consider zero and just like put it on the top of the previous value. So that when you reset, your, when you reboot your MySQL uh, server or exporter and the counters, they, they will just be uh, continuously growing. Uh, you have gauche, so like the number of active connections, that's something that go up and down all the time. Histograms is uh, when you have one value like the response time or the query time and then Prometheus will make multiple buckets like, okay, I have that many queries that uh, are in uh, less than one second, that many queries in less than two seconds, and so you can miss statistics. And the last one, summary is uh, useless most of the time because uh, it's a kind of metric that you cannot sum, you cannot make averages, you cannot, you cannot do anything about that. So it's difficult to use. So don't just don't use the last one. Uh, if some of you are uh, new graphite, uh, then I will say something about that. That you cannot use Prometheus like you use graphite. Uh, it simply doesn't work. It is not designed for it. So in Prometheus, when you have a metric, the metric is living for a certain time. So if you fetch the data every 10 seconds and you have uh, a metric, then the metric will live for 10 seconds. So if you want to do stuff like you do in Graphite, like do your deployments and that kind of things, uh, in Prometheus, this doesn't work. So for that, for when you want to store events, then it's better to go to something like Elasticsearch. Okay, so how does all of this uh, actually work? So this is very complicated. So if you don't want an ADH, uh, maybe don't look at the next slide. So Prometheus is using plain HTTP and plain text. So that's what uh, Prometheus is doing, or you can do some uh, compression, but basically, uh, the way that Prometheus gets the metrics is using HTTP and plain text. It can do HTTPS, but it cannot serve HTTPS. So uh, Prometheus, they say that uh, HTTPS is the job of the reverse proxy. If you really want to have your Prometheus uh, served over HTTPS, just put a small reverse proxy that will do the SSL thing, but it can fetch uh, exporters that are using uh, HTTPS without any problem. So that's what you get. So if you go to any Prometheus instance and you go to slash metrics in your browser, that's what you see. You see a big list of metrics 
with some help and the type of the metric and then the, the metric themselves. So like Prometheus notification queue length as a value of zero. If you want, if you look at this one, the notification sent, uh, then you have that number and you also have one metadata. So that's very simple. Any developer can write a small web server that will expose Prometheus metrics. It's really easy. So that's the actual metrics without the help and the type. So if you have an application that already has a HTTP server, it's very easy. If not, just you can just add a HTTP server that will just serve your metrics. Uh, so it's very, very, very easy to do. And some applications already do that natively. So like if you are using uh, Kubernetes, Ceph, etcd, Telegraph, Grafana, MGMT, all those software, they expose natively Prometheus metrics. So you don't need to worry about that. They can just export the metrics and Prometheus will just fetch them automatically. So they have a HTTP server embedded. But there are situations when you cannot have a HTTP server, like uh, your Linux metrics or your MySQL. Uh, or a software that you don't control, which is proprietary, or a third-party service like a remote API that doesn't support Prometheus. Then Prometheus has a system of exporters. So next to your service, you have a smaller service that will just be there to uh, serve you Prometheus metrics. So there are small HTTP servers that will connect to the target, like to the MySQL server, to the, to the network switch, to the Apache, anything you want. And if you want to write your own exporter, then you can write them in Python, Go, Java. You have a lot of choices. There are many, many helpers to help you to do that. So that's very, very great. Also, it's important to understand that exporter, they should not cache the data, they should not do uh, act la as proxy, so you should see an exporter just like your MySQL service. Uh, it is not there to like uh, prevent, it will run the queries on the MySQL each time that you want the metrics, for example. It is not its role to do some caching and stuff like that, so don't write exporters that will uh, be too expensive and that will kill your services. If you take a look at what, what, which exporters are officially supported by the Prometheus project, you have a bunch of them. And that's just the official ones. So like Memcached, MySQL, HAProxy, ConnectD, and all, all of them. It's really amazing the number of exporters that exist. But those ones are supported by Prometheus, uh, the, the Prometheus core team. Let's focus about two of three exporters before going to uh, the MySQL one. So the the first and the more important one is the node exporter. It will fetch your Linux metrics, your Unix metrics. Uh, I think it's also work on Macs and that kind of things. So with that exporter, you will actually have the metrics on your CPU, your memory, the disk space, the network, the load, the time. Uh, all of that is part of that exporter. And then. Uh, that exporter also has a text file exporter. So if you have a bash script that can write metrics to a file, you can use a node exporter and just okay say, OK, we'll just take that metric and expose it as well. So in some cases, when you don't want to write your own exporter, you can use that. That's very uh, convenient. I, re I recommend you to still write an, a proper exporter, but that can help you. and. That's very easy and it comes for free with the node exporter. Another important exporter is the black box exporter. So this allows you to test your HTTP endpoints, DNS, TCP sockets, like is my uh, database socket open to run uh, ICMP tests, that kind of things. So you can have all of that uh, also very easily. One example is that you can have uh, with the HTTP module, uh, the SSL certificate uh, expiry date. So it's very great because then you can do alerting on it and that kind of things. So MySQL, what about MySQL? So MySQL has an exporter, of course. And the way that it works with MySQL is that you have your MySQL service, and next to it, you put your MySQL D exporter. Uh, usually, you do it on the same node. Uh, 
and then you go. Prometheus will every 30 seconds do a query on the MySQL D exporter, like, okay, give me the metrics. The MySQL D exporter will start running SQL queries on the MySQL service, like, okay, give me the current status, give me the, the variable, that kind of things, and then it will just give a plain text answer to uh, Prometheus that will store that with additional data, like uh, which exporter was that, how many metrics do I get, what time did it take, that kind of thing is stored into uh, Prometheus as well. So, the problem with that is that uh, if you do that every 10 seconds, you will kill your MySQL instance, because some of the queries are very expensive, and if you run really every query every 10 seconds, uh, it will more likely take more than 10 seconds to render, so it will time out. So you need a way to fetch some data every one minute, other data every 10 seconds, and how do we do that? Well, we will tell the exporter to like run some data every minute and some every 10 seconds, but I've just told you that the exporter, they don't do that kind of stupid thing, they don't do caching, they you should be clear with uh, what you ask them. So that's why you can pass parameters to exporters like, okay, every 10 seconds I will uh, collect the global status because that's fast, that's useful, and I can alert on that more uh, easily if I have the data every 10 seconds. And then if you look at the performance schema, well, maybe you don't want to run that every 10 seconds, but every one minute. And so you can pass the parameter collect and then just collect those things. So this is specific to the MySQL exporter, other exporter have other parameters, uh, but this allows you to still get a very high frequency on uh, some important metrics, but uh, on other metrics, just one er once every minute is fine enough, then you can do this like this. A word about MySQL replication. So you can do MySQL replication in multiple ways. Master, 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 slave, master, slave, slave, master, slave, 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 slave. You have a lot of choices in uh, MySQL and it can be very complex and a very big chain. And uh, to measure that replication, uh, there is a tool that's called PTRB that allows you, that is a daemon that you run on, on your MySQL masters and every second or every uh, interval you define, it will update a table with the current timestamp. And when you go to the slave, then you can see, okay, the server one is at that timestamp now uh, at my replication, as where I am in the replication. So you know that if that is not the current date on the slave, that the replication is lagging behind. So that tool, PTRB, that does that is a GPL written in Perl and part of the Parkana toolkit. Uh, and it's really great to, to just do that. Every second it will uh, write into a, uh, a table the current time, so you know the replication status on the slave. MySQL is that natively. Uh, it is exported in the exporter that value, uh, but there are a bunch of situations where that uh, native value of MySQL is not correct. So sometimes it's just not correct, or sometimes just it's buggy. So the end-to-end -end test with the PTR bit is very important. So um, the way it works in the exporter is that we look into the table and we don't use PTR bit on the slave. And you can enable that with those command line flags. So if you have MySQL application, uh, I suggest you to actually use PTR bit because it's really great. And then you have two metrics, like uh, the timestamp that is stored in the server when we fetch the metrics and the timestamp that the server thinks it's no. So you can do a difference between the two of them to know uh, exactly the, the lag uh, of uh, the, the replication. So now that we have seen uh, that my SQL exporter, I suggest that we go back to Prometheus. So this is uh, the Prometheus web interface. It is very simple. You, you, have, you don't have many things to see there. It is uh, just like you can put there uh, an expression and then have uh, the values in the in the bottom. Uh, 
So you can have the first thing that you have you are in the mode console, which means that you just see the values. And you also have a button graph to see the graph. The reason why it is in console by default is that if you make a very big query with like uh, hundreds of value, and then you click on the graph thing, then it might slow down your Prometheus server because it will fetch all the data for the last one or one day. So you should try and tune your queries in console mode and then only click on the graph thing. You have also a drop down with all the different. Um, all the different metrics, and you see there uh, an example of, of with MySQL. So you have all the MySQL global status variables that are exposed as variables in Prometheus now. <coughs> so you can go back in time, you can see which uh, status has changed, that kind of things. So if you just like press the button, okay, show me the global status connection, and then you press execute, you go to the graph, and then you see a simple graph with the number of your MySQL connections. The same if you go for a MySQL global status commands total, for example, then you see multiple values. Because, uh, OK, the, the, the screen is a bit uh, uh, cut at the bottom, but basically, you have multiple types of commands, like select, update, delete, and you have one line for each one of them. You can select only some of them by using the metadata selection feature like this. So that's really great as well. And uh, you can also use regex thing, like I want all the select and all the set. So that's you have the two lines with uh, select and set. One other, another one with select or set options. Uh, and you can also uh, you also have functions like uh, derive. You have rate. You have delta. So you have a lot of functions that you can apply. So the derive function will show you the derivative over the last, in this case, five minutes for that value. You can also do things like this, like MySQL up equal equal zero. So it will show you if the MySQL instance is down. If it is up, then you will have no data. This is useful for alerting, so we will see alerting later. But this is how you do alerting in PromQL. So you basically put a value and then equal, equal, or greater than, or so, and that, that's it. You can also do some more complex queries, like I want the sum of the average over time of that metric over 10 minutes for each instance. And I want to. Uh, to remove uh, the same thing, but one day before. So that shows you how your uh, MySQL info schematic is evolving compared to yesterday at the same time. So the offset uh, command, you can do it on any metric. You can put one day, one week, one hour. So it's very, very useful. So you can see, OK, at, that, at this moment, one hour ago, this is what my, how my system looks like. A bunch of more things. So the name of the uh, metric is also a label, a label called underscore underscore name underscore underscore. So uh, it is a special label, and you can do regex on it. Like if you want to have all the variable with InnoDB and cache, then you can run that query. Uh, there is also a function that's very useful in the case of uh, replication. That's pretty linear. It's it uh, Prometheus will try to tell you, okay, the replication lag for in this case, uh, it will in two minutes it will look like this, because it will look at the value of the last five minutes and you say, okay, I think it is evolving in that way. So they're very very uh, useful, and then you also have uh, like you can also just do the sum of all the commands, commit and rollback. And then you will just have one metric for both labels. So let's speak about uh, recording and writing rules. So uh, the goal is that on the exporter side, you don't have a lot of logic. Like the exporter should not make the average. It should not try to uh, make the 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 total uh, make uh, the sums and that kind of thing. So you should move that intelligence somewhere else. 
So Prometheus is a system that enables you to uh, write some rules. And it will actually, instead of calculating the rate all the time, you can say, OK, for that specific metric, just calculate the rate and make a new metric with the value of the calculation so that you don't need to run the command every time, especially since it's very expensive, it's very useful. And then you also have a second kind of rule, which is the alerting. It is using the same syntax. So that's what it looks like. So you have uh, a group of rules. So and inside the group of rules, all the rules are evaluated in the order of the file. So I know that the first, it will uh, record that variable, which is the lag in second of my heartbeat, which I calculate by just uh, putting the no timestamp minus the store timestamp. So I know the how far behind I am in my replication, for example, and I don't need to do that calculation every time because now I have a new metric that I can use. Then I have a rule that will alert me, for example, if the replication is not running. So if the MySQL state, uh, status slave IO is not running, I get a zero or the same for the other thread. And I have an extra field for alerting that it must last at least two minutes to get an alert. So I know that, OK, if for some reason I restart the application and Prometheus sees that, sees that, then I will not get an alert. So the first two minutes is there, OK. I, I accept that my application is done for like one minute without being notified. But after two minutes, please warn me. And then you can have some annotation so that the people who receive the metric, they have some text and they know what is going on. Another alert when I have a bit more complex expression, when I uh, reuse uh, the, OK, it's not the same there, but it should be the same. So when I reuse what I have recorded previously, uh, so if the slave lag is higher than 30 seconds, and in two minutes, I think that it will still be more than uh, zero, then please alert me. And that's for at least five minutes. So it enables you to, OK, I have a five minutes replication lag, but actually well, it's going very well now. And in two minutes, it will be uh, less than zero. So I will not alert you, because this will be fixed automatically. So it allows you to have less noise uh, on your uh, alerting. So now that we have, when we have a value for that, for example, then Prometheus, it will send an alert every minute by default. So you can decide how to each interval, it evaluate the rules. But I think the default is one minute. So one minute, it will send an alert, but not to you. It will send an alert to uh, another daemon that's called the alert manager. So that's a completely independent service from Prometheus. And it will just wait to get alerts from Prometheus. So Prometheus is just very dumb. I have an alert, I send it, I send it, I send it again. You want more, I, here's more. So this is how it works. An alert manager, it, it will do multiple things. So the first thing that it will do is it will group the alerts. Because you know, if you have five nodes that are done, if you have 10 MySQL servers that are done, do you want 10 emails? No, you don't want that. So it can group. OK, it will say, OK, in the data center one, I have five MySQL server that are done, for example. So that's really great. Uh, what it can also do uh, is inhibition. Like, OK, I don't want to receive a mail because uh, my uh, data center is down. And also, I will receive like 10,000 mails because the hosts are down. No, that's not uh, what you want. So you can also say, OK, if there is an alert with that label, uh, then uh, don't send me that total uh, alert. So that I know that, OK, my data center is done, but I won't get all the notification for all the services. And then when you start working on something, you can say, OK, uh, I know it. Please stop sending notification. or I know that I have an upgrade uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. So I will say, OK, Prometheus, between 3 and 4, please do not alert me for that specific service. So that's really uh, that's another feature of the Alert Manager. It will do the silence for you. And then, it, obviously, at a certain moment, 
when something is on fire, you need to be notified. And alert manager is the one that will notify you. So it can uh, send emails, it can uh, call a web service by using a webhook, or uh, it has some third party integration like uh, Victor Ops, uh, Page or Duty, that kind of things. And you also have third party services that use the webhook, like uh, to send uh, SMS, that kind of things. So that's uh, most of the time you will want the two, the mails and then the webhook and write a small application that can do whatever uh, you want with uh, the alerts that you will get in JSON on that webhook. Then you need to define some routes like uh, the alerts, uh, they, need to, uh, they need to go first to uh, a log mailbox, and if it's critical, then send it to the network team if it's a network alert or to the service team if it's a service alert. And if it's critical, then send it via SMS. Then you have the warnings and then okay. Uh, for the warning, okay, just send the mail then. And you, you create the routes to, for the alerting. You can, it can be very complex and you can nest them uh, as much as you want. So you can make it very complex if you want. There is on the Alert Manager an interface when you can pass your configuration and it will show you a graph of your routing tree. So let's speak about high availability because I've told you that, okay, high availability is easy with Prometheus. Yeah, it's easy with Prometheus because all you have to do is to run two Prometheus servers and that's done. They have, you put the same configuration of each one of them and you make them watch uh, each other. And they never told to each other, there is no protocol that will say, okay, the other one is on you. You don't have that at that point, just uh, two different primitives. They just, all of they do is that one is monitoring the metrics of the other one. So you know when it is on, but there is no uh, intelligence at that level. The intelligence is at the alert manager level. So when you have multiple alert managers, uh, you make all the primitive server, they send the alerts to everyone. Like, I send the alert to the first alert manager, to the second alert manager, and go, 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 and so that everyone gets the alerts. And then those ones, they do speak to each other. So that they will say, okay, I have sent the notification, so that the second one doesn't send the notification again. And that's the way that you can have uh, easily ability with alert manager. And if by accident they cannot speak to each other, then you will get the same notification twice. So that's kind of acceptable given that you have a network problem. Uh, it's also important to note uh, that those alert manager, they shoot, um, they shoot alert, well, they should receive alerts when Prometheus are down, so you should make an alert on your Prometheus rules that, okay, if a Prometheus instance is down, then send an alert so that you know it. So we have seen Prometheus, the MySQL exporter, and uh, Alert Manager, so let's go on with Grafana. So, so far we have seen uh, a lot of tools, they do one job. Prometheus, it will do the collection of the data. Alert Manager, it will send you the notifications when it's needed. Uh, then you have the exporters, and Grafana is the one that will show you the data. I've shown you that Prometheus has a web interface, it's a very, very basic web interface and it's not nice, it's not funny. So to do the real graphing thing, then just take Grafana. So Grafana, open source, it's a web app. Uh, it is doing visualization now, it can also do alerting, but uh, I don't think that anyone is using that. Uh, there are a lot of plugins, so you can have plugins for extra data sources or a new uh, way to visualize your data. And you can plug it to your Prometheus, Graphite, InfluxDB, anything you want. And you can play with an API as well, so you can uh, do stuff automatically with uh, Grafana as well. One interesting point of Grafana is that it was born uh, out of Kibana tree. Kibana, which is the product of Elasticsearch to do the visualization. Uh, and at that time, Kibana tree was fully GS driven, so uh, everything happened in the browser. And Grafana started from that. 
and uh, the two projects never got together again. So it's kind of sad that now we have Grafana on one side and uh, Kibana on the other side, but it's it's like this and we cannot do anything about that. So no, it's two different products, uh, but originally they are on the same base, but now they both have evolved. So no, Grafana and Kibana, they are no longer just JavaScript thing in the browser, no, they're fully featured uh, Golang programs. I think, I'm not sure if uh, Kibana is in Golang. So, the relationship between Grafana and Prometheus is very strong. So, Prometheus, they have their own consoles, you can do some stuff in Prometheus, uh, but they, they are not recommending you to do that. So they tell you clearly, okay, we prefer Grafana, so please go and use Grafana. And it's a very important relationship, and the Grafana developers, they put a lot of effort in Prometheus support for Grafana, so it's very, it's very great. So what do you have in Grafana? So you have uh, anything that you can expect from a graphing solution, like uh, uh, values, uh, bars, uh, graphs like this. So you have everything that you need to visualize lo your data. Uh, you can go back in time, like I want to see the last two days, the last seven days, the last five years, you can do this. Uh, you can auto-refresh so that if you have uh, your graph on the world, then it will auto-refresh every minute, so you, it's always up to date. It's very, very impressive. And it's very easy to as Prometheus in Grafana, uh, you have multiple options, so uh, you can you can just have the URL with uh, just plain HTTP. Proxy means that uh, it is Grafana that will access Prometheus and not your browser as a user. And then you have you can have HTTP authentication or even uh, TLS client authentication. So if you have a Grafana that you want to be hosted outside of your data center, then you can have a secure connections thanks to uh, mutual SSL, that kind of things. And then, okay, you have your, uh, your Prometheus in Grafana, and then you, you have a, a dashboard that's ready for it. And when you click on the import button, then you have a graph with uh, your Prometheus metrics. So that's one thing, but as I told you, when you have I have ability, then you have multiple Prometheus instances. And you can have that on Grafana. So that's a feature of Grafana. And you can even, at uh, the top of your uh, of your dashboard, you can say, OK, I want to see the Prometheus 1, the Prometheus 2. It's very easy. And one other use case is that, so remember the access mode proxy? So if you put access mode local, and the address local of 1990, when you will go to the Grafana, then you will see what is in your current Prometheus on your development machine, for example. So it enables the developers to actually see, OK, what do the graph look like uh, in my Grafana by using my local data that I am developing now? So that's very, very cool. So Grafana is great, but if you want to make dashboards, it takes a lot of time. And to get them right, and to take the extra step of like, I want the errors in red, I want all of that, takes a lot of time. And also, you need the need, a deep knowledge, uh, improve them a very large amount of time, so it's very painful. But once you have nice dashboard, then you can share them. And that's what a company did, Percona, they do uh, MySQL Mongo, uh, consulting, and they decided, okay, Prometheus is great, we really like that, we really like Grafana, but our customers, they want dashboards, they don't want to make their own dashboard, and all of customers, they need the same dashboards, because yeah, you know, DB performance is the same on every customer, right? So what you need to watch is the same everywhere, so let's make some dashboard and share them. And that's what they did. It's a uh, AGPL license, so it's open source. And basically, you have a bunch of dashboards that you can use, reuse, and see, and very awesome. So to install the the Perfina, uh, the dashboards, and you can you can you have multiple options. You can just 
uh, telegraphana, okay, here is the directory with the JSON files, and you put the files there just by cloning the Git uh, repository, or you can go for a more complex, complex method internally and use the API to upload the JSON files. On the MySQL side, uh, the Percona dashboard, they require you uh, MySQL the exporter, MySQL, and some other values. And also, when you, with your node exporter, they require you to have those different uh, things enabled to, have, to see everything in the graph that they prepare for you. One last thing is that you need to have uh, the same instance name of your uh, node exporter and your MySQL exporter. So it's very important that you have the same name. And once you have all of that, then you have, you will see in your Grafana all those graphs like uh, the MariaD the MariaDB graph, this space, this performance. Then a bunch of MySQL graph like an overview, the replication, the query response time, the performance schema, all of that, and more and more. And uh, so it's very great. Uh, but you will have maybe too much of them, so you maybe sometimes you will just remove, okay, I will remove all the MongoDB ones because I will, I don't use Mongo, but basically they are there, so you can, if one day you use Mongo, you can just take them and it will be great. So what do they look like, those uh, Grafana dashboards? So that's, for example, the MySQL overview, so you have, uh, you can pick the, the graph on the top and then you see, okay, the uptime, the you know, DB buffer pool size, uh, the buffer pool size compared to the amount of RAM. Uh, I don't know why there's no value there, but okay. Uh, and then you can see uh, a bunch of stuff and you see that they really did the polishing of like uh, putting the right colors and like uh, this one is filled, this one is not fine. That takes a lot of time and they did it, so it's very awesome. MySQL overview, so here you see all the commands that have been run, uh, the handlers. In ODB, as I told you, you have a lot of data about uh, in ODB. Uh, and actually, when you have a problem sometimes, well, actually, you need to be very good to understand all the graphs, but uh, you see still, uh, you have still some good hints or what is going on. Even if you don't understand all the graphs, you can always take a look at, okay, that's a query they take, that's what it means in MySQL and that kind of things. And also a dashboard for the replication, like, okay, it is, here is my replication delay, and it, the replication is running, it's fine. So with that kind of thing, I, you can actually replace uh, a tool like uh, Dashing with Grafana because you can have uh, that kind of values, it's really great. Grafana, uh, they, they also support multi-tenancy so that if you have multiple customers with multiple, uh, and you don't want to expose all the same dashboards to all the customers, you can have multiple organizations in your Grafana. Uh, you can also mark, so you can also have annotations in the graph so that uh, if you have an Elasticsearch and you push an event to Elasticsearch and then you can have a vertical bar in your uh, Grafana, that's really nice. And then what is going uh, in the next releases of Grafana is that you will be able to have the dashboards in different folders. Like in this case, we would have a folder for the MongoDB, a folder for the MySQL. So that will be really awesome because the long flat list that you have now uh, will no longer exist. One last thing about Grafana uh, is that uh, all the dashboards are written in JSON, and uh, I'm building uh, a library b based on JSONet to actually uh, write a dashboard more easily. Uh, it is very brand new, but if you are interested into writing Grafana dashboard, I encourage you to have a look. Uh, so here is what it looks like. So I know you cannot read it, but basically with only three lines on the left, then you can have all the default values on the right. So this is a compiled version, and this is the short version of the graph. So it's really nice. So uh, Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, it's really first class, first class monitoring tools, and you can do everything with that. So you don't need uh, an extra Ikinga, you don't need an extra, uh, I don't know, an extra Zybix. Or, no, you can do everything with Prometheus and Grafana. It takes time because there are still a lot of things that you need to do yourself, like the alerting rules, the recording rules. Uh, there is no real standard with them. 
uh, the approach of Prometheus is completely different from any other tool uh, around. So, but I really like that. It's very simple. Uh, HTTP is easy to understand, easy to debug, so it's really great. You can have that in your application and have your developers writing the matrix so you don't need to go in the database to check that query. That, you know, you can do that directly uh, at the application level. Okay, tell me how many requests did you serve, that kind of thing. So you can uh, engage your developers into the monitoring system as well. It's really nice and they can test it locally because Prometheus runs on any OS that you would have. So it's really nice. And when you monitor uh, MySQL with uh, Prometheus, and uh, then I encourage you to look at the Percona dashboards. It's really great, uh, and you can get ready to use uh, the to use them in only a few minutes. So it's really great. One thing I forgot to say about the dashboards uh, is that they are part of a broader solution from Bercona, which is called PMM, where they have another service and just Prometheus and Grafana. But this is half of that PMM uh, product that they have. Okay. Uh, thank you. So if you have any questions, I'm just in time, so you have uh, plenty of time for questions about anything related to Prometheus, Grafana, MySQL, anything you want. Thank you. Okay, before anybody else can ask something, I have a question. Is it possible to um, to use the alerting module to aggregate um, alerts from other monitoring solutions to do it in one place? Uh, so I know that, I, I told you that Grafana can send alerts and there is the option in Grafana, for example, to send alerts to Alert Manager. So yes, it's there is an HTTP API that you can use. Uh, it's not stable yet, so I don't think it's versioned. Uh, but yes, you can do it, do it, and I know that Grafana is doing it, so it should be possible to do that with other things. And I know for uh, I don't know for Isinga, but I know that for Nagios there is also a bridge that can send uh, Nagios alerts to uh, Alert Manager as well. Thank you. Uh. Thank you. For, hello. Thank you for your very informative talk. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about Prometheus 2 and some of the major things that we should watch out for or care to know about? So Prometheus 2, uh, there are uh, a few major uh, improvements. The first of all is the new uh, TSDB, the new time series database that is rewritten from scratch by people from CoreOS. Uh, that's very efficient and that can scale a lot more than the version one. And then you also have improvement on staleness. So in Prometheus 1, when a metric is gone, then it is still in Prometheus for five minutes. In Prometheus 2, when the metric is gone, it's directly gone and you don't have it polluting your graphs anymore. So that's uh, the main feature of Prometheus 2. Uh, Prometheus 2 has been in beta and for months and months and now it's out uh, for already two weeks and there are, I don't think that there are major bugs and we are already using that in production and it works really, really well. So uh, you can, if you are using Prometheus 1, I encourage you to just make the jump to Prometheus 2. Now, when you want to upgrade from one to two, it's a bit compli complicated uh, because there is no, not only a migration tool. So the recommendation is that you run a Prometheus two next to your Prometheus one, and then you uh, use the two to query the one. Well, it's on the website. Yeah. Will Will people who have implemented um, Prometheus metrics in their software like in MGMT, will they have to port to support Prometheus 2 or are the existing things compatible? No, no. Uh, the, the, it's already working. So there is no change in the API. So the metrics uh, that were made for Prometheus 1, they work for Prometheus 2. Cool. Thank you. And uh, yeah. So API wise, because like for example, Prometheus is version 2, Alert Manager, did doesn't is still version 0 0.10. And so the API between those services is also uh, 
version independent so they can talk to each other uh, across major releases. So that's also great. Uh, regarding the promises to point zero um, and the exporters, is there any difference? Between, no. Uh, so with the same exporters that we have in the 1.8? Yes. We can continue. Yes, with. yes, uh, yes. As I, as I just told, there is no difference. Uh, so it is really great. Well, one of the things that has changed, for example, is that in your recording rules, now they are in YAML, before it was not YAML, and some functions are gone, like the primitive team, they say, okay, that function is useless, we remove it, so you have like three or four functions that you need to adapt to switch to primitives to which you have used them, but that's all. Really, for end user perspective, it's really, really uh, easy. Okay, another question regarding to MySQL. Um, does the exporter has to be deployed in the same machine that, than, as, than MySQL, or mm, we, uh, we can deploy these exporters in other machine that connection with MySQL? You can uh, put the, ex the exporter whatever, wherever you want, and it can connect using uh, an environment variable with the address of the database or a my.cnf file, uh, like you want. So you don't need to have it next to your MySQL instance. Okay, but for node exports, node, node exports? Yeah, the node exporter needs to run on the same machine, yes. Okay. That one, because it will read the file system in slash proc, it will get the current time, so if you put it on a machine, it will not work. But the MySQL exporter can run any, anywhere you want. Okay. But the node exporter, but uh, so before rolling out the node exporter, we did some uh, performance test and we couldn't see the impact of the export on the machine, so it's really uh, a low footprint. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any more questions? Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm still around. Oh, there is one. No. I'm still there until I, st I will still be there at the Hackathon on Friday, so I am around all the time if you want to ask me more questions about Prometheus Grafana or anything like that. Thank you.